My title is Radiotherapy on Coplastic Surgery. Thank you very much to Pet Krivotko and Alex Besonov for invitation. Of course, the, be the bad situation is we are not in, in St. Pe Petersburg, uh, so only online version, but I believe the conference will be the success. Uh, so uh, radiotherapy and oncoplastic. First of all, we should tell uh, very shortly that we have more and more cases of non-palpable breast, uh, breast cancers. And generally, we know that, for example, in some countries, like for example, in Netherlands, we have almost 50% of breast cancer that is non-palpable lesions. And generally, we can tell that in some of this, the, in, the, in this group of the patient, we can expect that maybe the oncoplastic surgery is not necessary. This is wide local excision, probably. In most of the cases, it's, 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 um, it's the good option. Uh, in breast conservative treatment, we know that uh, one of the biggest problems it, it is or it was uh, the problem of margins. You see here in the 90s, we, we had even till 40% of positive margins. At that moment, it is around 15%. That's why we, we need the good techniques for, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, localization of the, of the lesions. And we have more and more information in this field in the in the in the in the literature. Very big problem, of course. Uh, it can be sometimes for us the the group of a patient after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. That's why we have more and more information about the new methods of breast tumor localization. For example, one of the most popular at that moment in, for example, Great Britain and Netherlands. This is the, these are the methods with uh, to, the tumor localization with magnetic marker. And for example, it was two years ago, very interesting meeting in Great Britain, uh, the whole day only about these methods, Wolverhampton, Birmingham uh, meeting uh, by Ragvan Vidya, very interesting. And of course, a lot of discussion about the early breast cancer and the problem of cancers after an adjuvant chemotherapy, and of course, the group of oncoplastic surgery. On the other hand, the second problem of breast conservative treatment and oncoplastic, of course, this is one point, is uh, surgery. The second problem is uh, radiotherapy. At that moment, of course, we know that breast conservative treatment and radical mastectomy is the, uh, from the survival point of view is the, the same. We have multiple um, trials uh, with, with this information. This is, for example, from New England Journal of Medicine. 20 years follow-up, compare BCT with mastectomy. And we know very good that the results of BCT and uh, mastectomy are similar uh, from uh, in, in, in uh, the patient uh, from, uh, with the problem of the survival. So there is, uh, there is everything clear for us. And of course, for today, we have uh, for the last 10, for the last 20 years, we have a big progress in the field of the new and modern techniques in the, in the breast surgery or breast treatment. So uh, we know that uh, two points of this uh, progress are radiotherapy, the new techniques, and I will tell you in, F, uh, on, uh, in this presentation, and of course, the oncoplastic surgery, it is the last 10 years. Of course, the oncoplastic surgery, the application of oncoplastic techniques, oncotechniques, oncoplastic techniques in, in oncological surgery, this is, this is uh, the last 10 years. And two guys who are responsible, uh, I can tell, responsible for, for this oncoplastic techniques in oncological surgery, propagation of this, uh, promote this, uh, this technique is, of course, Werner Auders from Düsseldorf and Krishna Klo from Paris. Why we use the oncoplastic surgery? We use oncoplastic surgery, you see here, because we uh, have quite a big group of patients who are not satisfied with the cosmetic outcome of the surgery. That's why we need oncoplastic surgery. For example, there is a problem of the bigger tumors. When we have bigger tumor, the larger tumor bed. And of course, there is a question about cosmetic outcome and about more complication in the future, for example, fat necrosis, that's why we need oncoplastic surgery. And we know from many publications where oncoplastic surgery is uh, more important. And for example, you see that um, oncoplastic breast surgery 
uh, are more important from aesthetic point of view in inferior pole tumors in larger excision volumes, so the breast ratio to, to, to the tumor ratio, larger fatty breast, and of course, this is very interesting postoperative complication because from some of the publication we can find information that uh, the aesthetic outcome, even if we have complication after, on after oncoplastic surgery, the, uh, the aesthetic outcome is much better than white local excision with postoperative complication. Of course, we know that uh, the oncoplastic um, surgery, the very important is uh, where is the tumor, what part of the breast. That's why, for example, Krishna Klo publication with uh, information about quadrant atlas for oncoplastic surgery, very interesting publication. And uh, we know at that moment, when we compare the classical model of breast conservative therapy with oncoplastic techniques, uh, we know that uh, in oncoplastic, we have much lower R1 resection, we have better patient satisfaction. So we know that these techniques are very, very good option for our patient. Uh, and uh, we know that this is one of the, uh, the, the, the biggest steps in modern uh, breast uh, surgery. So surgery is surgery, but radiotherapy we have. The radiotherapy is a second uh, point, a second hand of our idea of, of BCT treatment. And you see here that, of course, the radiotherapy, we have a lot of new dramatically uh, changes um, in during the last decades. And of course, this is good for us and for our patient. We know, of course, from the older trials that, uh, for example, uh, compared to BCT to, uh, to, uh, to mastectomy, that uh, the results are, are very similar. For example, ERTC trial 10, uh, 10 uh, Another problem in radiotherapy uh, from BCT point of view and, of course, oncoplastic point of view, Boost versus no boost. We know from the older trials that the boost is very important. The boost is very important uh, mainly in a younger patient, of course. And that's why at that moment we have the new trials in the field of BCT and, and radiotherapy. For, exam for example, one of, one of, of these trials is the, uh, the young boost uh, trial. This is very important and it will be probably in the next year's information, uh, what level of the boost in our patient it will be, it will be satisfied in the young patient. And the second uh, problem is the, 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 the quality of, of surgery and the problem of cosmesis. So I am very interested what about this trial in the, in the future. Of course, for us and for oncoplastic surgery, there is very important problem, what is named in the literature, geographical missing. You see here that we have ideal CT view, so target volume uh, and missed target volume in radiotherapy. Because exactly, we don't know exactly where is uh, the tumor bed after, sometimes after even wide local excision and in oncoplastic surgery, probably it's much bigger problem. So we know that the consequence of geographic, uh, geographic loss, geographic missing, there is a problem that probably one in four breast cancer recurrence after conservative treatment is because the boost of the radiotherapy, it was not strictly in the tumor, in the tumor bed. At that moment, we have some gold standard. It's of course the gold standard is to clip tumor bed. We know very good. And we should really, we should remember always about this problem because this is very important for our patient. You see here information based on the publication that only CT, it's not enough. The clipping, the, the, the sensitivity of the, the, the to, to, to find the tumor bed is much higher when we using clipping. But of course, this is not ideal. The ideal method probably is some type of intraoperative. That's why here I, uh, I put the information, maybe intraoperative radiotherapy, it will be 100%. And of course, maybe the intraoperative radiotherapy, it will be the very important point 
from oncoplastic uh, surgery point of view. Of course, in oncoplastic surgery, we should think about, in some group of our patients, about uh, something what is named in radiotherapy accelerated partial burst irradiation. This is a very good and modern technique. And of course, how to do it? We have a lot of information about accelerated partial breast irradiation. And you see here the different types of, of the radiotherapy uh, intraoperatively or just after operation. So we have some types of the brachytherapy. We have conformational radiation therapy 3D. We have the different types of intraoperative radiation therapy. But generally we know, and this is a difficult for us, that these methods are not the same, every method, every of this method. We know that electrons probably it's not the same like, uh, like balloon method in brachytherapy. So mammocyte, this is not the same with photons. There is not the same with interstitial brachytherapy. So that's why we should wait, for example, for the next trials and maybe next information in this field. But theoretically, it is very good option, some type of of accelerated partial breast irradiation, there is some good option for our patient. You see here the different methods. So the balloon catheter, classical brachytherapy, uh, um, orthovolt radiotherapy intraoperatively, and electron intraoperatively. And what we have here, we have, for example, the difference. We, you see here, when we use electrons, the, the region near to the tumor bed in electrons, always you have the dose 100%. When you use, for example, orthovolt, you see there is a difference. When we have a few centimeter outside of the tumor bed, theoretically the level of radiotherapy dose is very, very it's it's uh, very it, it's decreased. So this is the question for a future: what type uh, of ra intraoperative radiotherapy? is the best option and that's why we wait for some trials like HIOP trial by Salzburg University or for example some trial uh, the target trial for example the next the next part of the target trial in Great Britain so we will see very interesting and very maybe this is some future for our oncoplastic surgery and our oncoplastic patient is preoperative accelerated partial breast irradiation you see here that uh, probably this is very interesting. Why? Because we don't have here something what's, what I said previously, geographic means. We have very clear situation. We know where is a tumor. That's why maybe in this group of a patient, the radiotherapy before surgery, it will be something interesting. The site we have here, you see here, uh, we can think about some new biomarkers. We have some uh, a lot of interesting publication in this field. So but this is completely different problem. And uh, of course, very interesting for us from surgical point of view is avoid development of breast induration fibrosis because when radiotherapy is the first and the second is surgery, we remove the tissue where there is induration of fibrosis. So probably it will be much better in uh, uh, cosmet cosmesis, much better cosmetic results from uh, in, our, in our patient. That's why we have some new trials, for example, PubB trial one. And uh, from this trial, very small number of patients, we know that uh, probably uh, really it's work, really it's a good way uh, for a future. At that moment, we have another trial, the PAPB2, and uh, it will be very interesting, the bigger number of patient information in the next few years, what about the preoperative, for example, preoperative radiotherapy, it is really interesting. Of course, when we use oncoplastic surgery, we should remember, since oncoplastic breast surgery, greater interaction, really greater interaction between surgeons and radiation oncologists is needed. And for example, we can find very interesting information in a few publications I saw that planning boost together, at least initially when new oncoplastic breast surgery uh, technique we introduce in our department, we should talk with our radiation oncologists. This is very important. As, and of course, when we have our patient, in some of our patients, what I saw it, um, previously, we can use APBB, so uh, accelerated partial based uh, irradiation, 
or whole breast irradiation plus plus boost. So, but this boost we can use with the intraoperative techniques. So this is very interesting and this is probably the future.